and welcome to Weather Slap. I'm Claire Nazir. And I'm Alex Deakin. Storm Agnes has left the shores of the UK and whilst the next few days look a little quieter, there's still plenty of interesting weather, particularly as we head into October, with some newspapers alluding to a mini heatwave, whatever one of those is. Uh, but we'll have more on that in a moment. Interesting. Can't wait to hear about that, Alex. First of all, though, let's turn to your global weather headlines. All eyes have been on Storm Elias this week. Yet another potent storm that's brought gargantuan amounts of rain and flooding to Greece. So let's just cast our minds back to Storm Daniel. That was just a few weeks ago. And now thunderstorms cover the central Mediterranean yet again. And we've seen horrible pictures coming out of Greece. I mean, the land hasn't recovered. Um, we've seen landslides, extensive flooding. It's the same region as Daniel. Elias is, again, just causing problems across this part of the world. And so some people who have been affected by or endured that storm, which was Storm Daniel earlier this month, that obviously impacted Libya tragically as well with huge consequences. This one is, is taking a similar track, not so much to Libya, although they are seeing some thunderstorms. It has mostly been across Greece. So, Alex, you know, I mean, we've been talking about this for a month now. We're talking about the amount of storms here. We had Dana before that as well that brought flooding to Iberia. Um, is this common for this time of year? I mean, let's look at the bigger picture first of all. What's happening right now? Why are these storms steering towards this part of Europe? Yeah, well, we've got high pressure sitting kind of across central Europe. It's been sitting there for most of September. So that kind of acts like a block and the, the low pressures t tend to skirt around that. Now, uh, right at the start of the month, for a week or so, that high pressure was sitting just to the east of the UK, which is why we had that very warm and sunny spell. It's since moved a little further west, but it's it's kind of been, sorry, it moved a little further east and is now sitting over central Europe, but it's been there for a long time. So that kind of blocks uh, the, the progression of low pressure systems. So they've been pushed to the south around that, and that's what we've been seeing with these storm systems. Now, um, Storm Daniel was 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 a medicane. We talked about that on here as well, where it's it's an area of low pressure. It's not it's not a full blown hurricane, but it's it's warm cord. It's driven by the warm seas, and it's at this time of year where you are most likely to see that kind of feature that's that's driven by the warm seas from below, and because the seas are still pretty warm, because it, it takes a while for the for the seas to cool off. So, uh, still some warm seas in that part of the world, but they're not as warm as they were earlier in September, obviously. So at this time of year, you do get these these intense areas of low pressure, but often also you do get high pressure at this time of year in, in the Mediterranean. Actually, September October is often a, a lovely time of the year to go to to go to Greece. Uh, I've been to Greece before uh, in October half term. It's been absolutely beautiful. So um, yeah, it's just this some this September we've had this low this high pressure blocking central parts of Europe, and that's meant these low pressure systems have been moving around its edges and and down across central and uh, particularly um, southeastern Europe. Yeah, there's been some analysis done on these sort of high end storms, which, as you say, they're not hurricanes, but they've been dubbed medicanes. So they've sort of got tropical elements to them and they produce a lot of rain. And, you know, we've got a bar chart here, which we will describe because obviously it's a podcast, it's audio. Um, but interestingly, the analysis which has been done, and this has not been done by the Met Office, but even so, it's a, it's a good source. The number of storms in the Mediterranean through the year does vary significantly. And in fact, the peak is in September, probably because of what you said, Alex, mm. because high pressure may be sitting to the north. Those high sea surface temperatures, which tend to peak around late August into September. And in fact, October is not far off it as well. So we're looking at an average of around 18 or, or 19 storms. And obviously they come in all shapes and sizes. And the Mediterranean is, is a huge area. So whether they, they hit Portugal and Spain or they're right across the other side and, and pushing almost towards Jordan. I mean, you know, they're not going to be hitting the same spot every time. And the lowest risk is actually during sort of June and July, perhaps before those temperatures really ramp up in terms of sea, sea temperatures. 
Yeah, and that's when you've obviously mostly got high pressure, most frequently dominating as well with the, with the shift of the season through the summer months. As the, so you kind of expect that, but it is quite striking how big September, October is on that bar chart compared. You know, it does drop off quite a bit in November, uh, and but even months like February and March are significantly, significantly mm-hmm. lower uh, than September and October. There's a definite peak at this time of year. And let's just remember Storm Daniel, which um, obviously impacted a huge amount of people, millions of people across um, Eastern Mediterranean, North and South as well. Um, And there's been some analysis done on the sort of detecting the climate change fingerprint on this event. Now, this is a rapid study. There'll be others done, which will be much more in depth, but it's good to look at some top lines. And we look at the World Weather Attribution. It's it's a website, it's a group of scientists who conduct these studies, again, analysing the event and seeing whether this event could have happened without the injection of man-made greenhouse gases, which obviously has a direct correlation to heat and energy in the atmosphere. And a couple of top lines, let's just give you those now. And if there's any more information that comes out over the next few months from our scientists, obviously, we'll we'll, uh, give you that information as well. So what they found was that the human induced climate change made this event, that Storm Daniel, up to 10 times more likely and 40 percent more intense. So they're big numbers, aren't they? Yeah, they are big numbers. That's quite that's quite a remarkable um, conclusion. And adding that in Greece, there are another contra- there are a few contributing factors which actually led to so many impacts. One of them was obviously the extreme heat waves that they really suffered, the fires which degraded the land significantly, and that obviously added to more flooding impacts. And also the distribution of where people live doesn't help either. And if you're living on the floodplain or in, in the firing line to, for these storms, then there's going to be more people um, affected by this. And then the insurance cost, the cost to the economy, the national economy ramps up as well. So you've got that you've got that double whammy, really, the, the extreme heat in the summer months, which is exacerbated by climate change. It's hotter that, that um, uh, changes the landscape to such an extent. You have more more fires and then you haven't got the the same root structure in the trees to, and that, that exacerbates the flooding. So it's kind of a double whammy, really, isn't it? It's quite interesting. I've not really thought about those two yeah. two things being linked before. It's, um, it's called lack of resilience. And I think that's one key thing that a lot of our climate scientists here at the Hadley Centre and the Met Office are looking uh, towards it's like how can we make our land and our, our societies more resilient adapt to these impacts of climate change which are going to carry on happening yeah yeah um the the weather at least is settling down in that part of the world yeah. a few thunderstorms around but um there is another low pressure system heading in but it just doesn't look quite as intense so there will be some more uh, showers, but tended to drift away eastwards as we go through the weekend, I think is the best way to put it. So if you are heading that out that way for a holiday, the weather should be settling down a little bit. Certainly looks less intense than it has been over uh, the rest of September. So Medicanes to hurricanes. Let's just give you an update of what's happening across the other side of the North Atlantic, because it's been quite a an interesting season and a very busy one, particularly through the second half, Alex. Yeah, and we're already up to R. We're already up to to R. So that is quite quite active. It was, it was a bit of a slow start, but yeah, there's been a it's been a, it seems to have been a very busy couple of months. Seems to have got through a lot of letters uh, very quickly. Statistically, of course, the 11th of September is the is the peak of the season. So we're kind of over that hump. But of course, every season every season is different. Uh, we've seen X Lee and X Nigel influencing our weather over recent weeks. Been talking about that on this podcast uh, quite a bit. It's obviously no longer hurricanes when they come to our shores, but still bringing a lot of wet and the windy weather. And even, um, you know, a kind of an element, an arm of ex uh, Ophelia kind of mm-hmm. generated that bit yeah. of extra moisture, which turned into a deep area of low pressure that we named as Storm Agnes um, earlier this week, even though Ophelia itself stayed the other side of the Atlantic, a kind of a, a bit of it broke off, if you like, and that that helped to form Storm Agnes. So it's been uh, pretty pretty lively. Average number of hurricanes over the past 30 years is 14.4. 2020, who, who can forget that uh, oh, s- storm Lordy. season? Yeah. When we got to 30 and we went through and started naming them yeah. Alpha, Beta, and that's, that created the change. So we don't go Alpha, Beta, Gamma anymore. There is a there is a backup list. 
that we could get to this year still mm. uh, that starts with a, with a new A. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see if we get to that. I think that was only the second time, is it, that, that, that we've gone into those extra... Yeah, that there was, I remember one back in the day when I was on Breakfast Telly where it just kept, kept on happening. You think, mm. when is this season going to end? And even in <laughs> December, there were tropical storms, which we then went into the into the Greek alphabet. So... Uh, yeah, that was a. I think that was. I'm going to say 2005, but I'm probably wrong. Uh, anyway, um, there have been three major hurricanes so far. Only one category five. That's interesting, mm. isn't it? That was Lee earlier this month. Uh, but Philippe, or was it Felipe? I'm not sure. Philippe. <clears throat> Let's go with Philippe. Yeah. Uh, um, is the latest tropical storm now weakening, but certainly something again that could affect. Uh, the northern Leeward Islands, Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. And uh, it does need to be kept an eye because it, it could then drift northwards and Im impact our weather system as well. And that there's been another one named now as well. Arena, yeah. So that makes it 17 tropical storms named. So we're well above the average and it's only October. So do you think we're going to get to Whitney? Oh, which Whitney is the would final... be good, wouldn't it? The Whitney yeah. would be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. Has yeah. there ever been a Whitney? Because I guess you, because it's on that six-year cycle of lists, isn't it? No. I guess there's a lot of these. There may we may never have had a Whitney before. Um, a lot of Alexes. We spoke the other day about how many Bettys there've been. Yeah, yeah. If you're did, W, right? if you're William or Wilhelmina, Wilma, Whitney, then it's it's you know you're not going to get your name on that list very often. It would be it would be good, wouldn't it, if Whitney formed in the uh, Gulf of Mexico and and affected Houston. Wait, right, wait, so we're going to put that one just there, but that was very good. You're on fire this morning, <laughs> Alex, you really are. Um, Alex, let's talk about the weather for the next few days because it's hit headline news in terms of everybody's thinking it's going to be a mini heat wave. We've had it on Sky News. And in fact, even two weeks ago, some of the newspapers were alluding to it. And we're not saying it's not going to happen, but we need to add a little bit of um, science to it and what the models are suggesting and what our forecasters are now sort of projecting in, into October. So, Alex, big question, hot or not? Well, I think we can safely say that it's not going to be a mini heat wave because there's no real definition of what a mini heat wave is. It's either a heat wave or it's not. Heat wave thresholds are set by the Met Office, uh, ranging from 25 degrees across a good part of the country to 28 Celsius uh, across the uh, the London area. And we need to hit those temperatures for three days in a row for it to be a heat wave. Uh, mini heat wave doesn't really have much, much meaning. It may well get a little warmer. It's actually going to be quite warm this weekend across the southeast. But at the same time, it's going to be wet and windy further west. So the weather's going to be pretty mixed through this weekend. Some heavy rain and some strong and gusty winds coming into Northern Ireland around uh, Irish Sea Coast during Saturday. But the southeast and, in fact, a good part of eastern Britain will be fine on Saturday. And then on Sunday, much of the north will be dry and bright for the south. There'll be a, a waving, wiggling weather front, which will bring some cloud and a, a little rain. But most places still dry and Sunday, but again, the southeast pretty warm, 24 degrees. Uh, then the weather looks a bit more mixed into next week, but there is high pressure moving in. We could see a, a bump in the temperatures later next week. So we are looking at temperatures on the rise for the early part of October uh, and some fine weather probably to come as well. But of course, this time of year it could be misty, murky mornings. The nights are longer than the days now, so some chilly nights likely also. Um, but yeah, the weather looks pretty mixed, but there will be some some higher temperatures on the way. The average temperature for October in the south is 15 or 16 degrees. So it's going to be quite a bit above that. Uh, further north, it's 13 or 14. Uh, but yeah, those nighttime temperatures really will be a, a, an increasing feature as we get some longer nights with clearer skies. It will be turning quite chilly. And that does mean the, the mists of mellow fruitfulness for which autumn is famous for. Mm, I love that. I'm actually just looking forward to when the leaves turn. I mean, Storm Agnes blew branches off my trees and also some leaves as well across the neighbourhood. Um, so it was quite lively up here on that night. It wasn't everywhere. Uh, but now I'm just looking forward to that colour just coming through because it's just a, a brilliant time of year just to step out on a crisp morning and just see the wonder of nature. I mean, my daughter was born in November. Her name is Sienna, named after the colour. 
uh, because I just love this time of year, those rich orange and reds and browns, just wonderful. Uh, yeah, there's trees in, our, in, in, in my garden that are already on the turn. Uh, and yeah, it does. It just, yeah, that's my, fa it's my favorite season. And that's the reason why, because you get you get some stormy weather as well. You get some lively weather. It can snow in the autumn as well, of course. But yeah, it's those crisp, misty mornings. I think I don't think there's been a lot of them recently. I think yeah. the last couple of autumns have been a bit disappointing in terms mm -hmm. of misty, atmospheric mornings. But um, so hopefully this one this one will bring some. And hopefully we'll be talking about Indian summers at some point through the next month or so. So <laughs> I can't. I'm really let it go. Awesome. Let it go. Yeah. Let okay. it go. And that's all from us, Alex and Claire, with you every week. Sometimes Aidan pops in and we have now Alex B, who's not Alex D, who's part of our presenting team. You heard him last week talking about Equinox. We're going to bring him into the, the co-hosting as well. So thank you so much for your company. It's always good to have you listening. Please respond. Please subscribe. Tell us what you think about the podcast. What do you want to really hear about weather-wise and climate-wise? And do check out our other YouTube features. Uh, speaking of Alex B, he was both doing the 10 day trend and the deep dive earlier this week. So you can catch those uh, on YouTube. And I did a Twitter spaces on climate on Thursday evening. So if you check out our Twitter, sorry, it's not Twitter anymore. It's X uh, and X spaces. Check us out on, on there. You can go and listen to that back. It was all about tipping points, which you've done podcasts on as well, Claire. I know. Yeah, there's a really good climate podcast on tipping points. And on that note, we're going to go and embrace Saturday morning when it arrives that crisp morning with a little bit of sunshine, mist and fog enjoy your weekend weather wherever you are and we'll see you next week goodbye another great weather snap claire thank you so much for listening and don't forget to hit subscribe then you catch all of our daily weathers on youtube as well and if podcasts are your thing check out our met office podcast channel lots of information lots of stories there and we'll see you again next week